Hey, fishy people, welcome back to the channel. I'm coming at you with another video. This time we're going to talk about oddball fish in the hobby, but also one that's super cool, the rope fish. Now, rope fish kind of look like an eel, but not the same. They also go by different names such as reed fish, snake fish, African rope fish, but its Latin name is on the screen. Now, now, there's a clue in these names as to where they actually come from in the wild. So why don't y'all take a second right now, see if you can take a guess down in the comments. They of course come from the African continent. Nations like the Congo, Nigeria, and Cameroon, just to name a couple. Now these are more your oddball exotic fish in the hobby so they're a little different for people that are looking for something more unique to put in their tanks. Now the rope fish is going to get quite large compared to other fish getting upwards of 24 inches or 2 feet though the average that I saw was about 15 inches. They also have an extremely long lifespan of 15 to 20 years. So it's something that you should not buy if you don't want to make that long term commitment care and housing commitment as well. Though for being such a large fish with a long lifespan, they're actually rather peaceful, providing they are kept with anything not too small that can easily be eaten. Now when you first get them, they're probably going to be more active at night, but through time if you're slowly feeding them during the daytime hours, they will slowly become more active during the day. Now as for a tank setup, you're going to want a minimum of a 40 gallon breeder or a 55 gallon and for these, you're going to want something with a sandy substrate, nothing too sharp that they can cut themselves on. Uh, caves and other hiding spots are going to be a great thing as well because they like to get right up in those. Temperature-wise, they can be kept at a range from 72 to 82. pH range is also fairly large too, uh, 6 to 7, 5, but a more realistic range is going to be 7 to 7, 8. Uh, as these fish are from Africa, they're going to want a similar neutral to alkaline water that, you know, you'd be used to for African cichlids or other things from the continent. They can also go in a brackish water setup if you want to go that route with a salinity of 1.020 and a good thing for all you plant lovers as these guys are a carnivore so they're not going to touch your plants at all. Though on the flip side, sadly for us nano keepers, things like your tetras, your danios and your asporas will most likely get eaten by these guys. Though that wouldn't be their primary food source, but they're too small, so they're going to get taken. But do not fret. They can be kept with other slightly medium to large sized things. Uh, all different types of garamis, dwarf and honey garami are good ones. Angelfish, the various sharks and loaches that we have in this hobby. I would maybe not go with cooler loaches because that might remind them of one of their food sources. But your yo-yo loaches, dojo loaches, things like that would be okay. You're going to want to avoid things like aggressive fish such as African cichlids or oscars or other medium to big size cichlids that are going to be aggressive. Now since they are carnivores, you're going to want to feed these guys things like bloodworms, brine shrimp, pellets such as the Hakari carnivore or the fluval bug bite. Now there might be a grace period where they're not going to take the dried food and you have to feed them live, but eventually you can probably condition these like other fish to get them to eat your freeze-dried variety. What I would suggest is if you're doing something like a Hikari Bloodworm or a freeze-dried tube fix, put it in anything of water first, mix it up, and then dump it into the water column so that it's moving and it might simulate a live fish food for them and they will probably take it slightly easier. You can try a Hikari Viberbite. Those are made to look like bloodworms as well. Here, once your rope fish does get bigger, you can feed it things like live earthworms and stuff of that nature. Overall, these guys are a hardy fish. They're going to take a wide range of tank parameters, but once they are established to a tank and to your water, don't go messing with the water tank, the water parameters at all. Uh, they're not going to be able to handle fluctuations in pH, temperature, all that stuff very well, and it will stress them out, and they are most likely to get sick and possibly pass on you. Now, it's also very common for these guys to get ick. So you keep a close eye on them, look for those behavioral changes, look for any discoloration on their skin or anything that might indicate they have ick or some other infection. 
Uh, adding salt weekly to your tanks is a good way to prevent this in rope fish. So rope fish are a super cool fish, super unique. Uh, if you have a bigger tank that can handle them, then not all of us are going to have a tank that can accommodate these guys. And if we do, we already got stuff in it that we can't put them with. So since they do require a slightly larger tank and they do get slightly bigger than other fish, but for their ability to adapt to most waterways and their beautifulness and the overall really ease of care for these guys and their really cool appearance, I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a 6.5 out of 10. So as always, thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy it. This is our first kind of oddball fish we're talking about here. Very unique one. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know your opinion on rope fish if you've kept them. If you want to keep them. If you're new here and you enjoy this kind of thing, hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.